Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today we're looking at the Ryzen 5 1600 and this is the AF variant. This is the 12 nanometer uh, process Ryzen 5 1600. So what we're really looking at is something that in essence is very, very similar to uh, the Ryzen 5 2600. It's just that this thing, typically speaking, is a little bit cheaper than the 2600 and should give you very, very similar performance. Now today the goal is very simple. We are gonna crack this thing open, get it on the test bench and we're gonna try to overclock it and see with the stock cooler, with the included cooler, what type of clock speeds, voltages, and temperatures we can net without adding anything else. We're just gonna use what's in the box here. So we're basically trying to answer the simple question, can you get away with the Ryzen 5 1600, the 12 nanometer one, the AF variant, can you get away with that using only the stock cooler? All right, let's uh, crack into this thing. So in the box, in our little unboxing here, we have an installation instructional for uh, FM2+, plus, AM3+, plus, AM4, and socket TR4 SP3 processors. Okay, and up front we do have the Ryzen 5 1600. This is, again, the AF variant. And in here though, this is another one of those little changes that the Ryzen 5 1600 AF is different from the AE variant. The AE variant actually shipped with the Wraith Spire Cooler. In this box, we actually have the Wraith Stealth Cooler, which was typically paired with the lower end CPUs. And after the first generation with the second generation, the Ryzen 5 2600 did in fact ship with the Wraith Stealth and the 2600X then got the Wraith Spire. So this is a step down from what originally shipped with the first Ryzen 5 1600, the AE variant, but this is pretty much on par with the 2600. In fact, I would argue that had they shipped the Wraith Spire cooler with this version of the 1600, it actually would have been, in my mind, a little bit better than getting a 2600 because you're getting a 12 nanometer, six core, 12 thread processor, just a better cooler had they put the Wraith Spire with this. And with this cooler, we do have pre-applied thermal paste, and I am absolutely going to be using that pre-applied thermal paste just to keep everything as just purely stock as absolutely possible. Understand it is possible you could get just slightly better performance with a little bit better thermal paste, though typically your gains with that aren't gonna be huge. So we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna go fetch that uh, test bench and get on with the installation. Now, as I take this cooler off, I am absolutely willing to test out the Ryzen 5 1600 on the Arctic cooler here, the freezer, rather the liquid freezer two cooler. If you're interested in seeing me uh, try to push the 1600 on an overkill cooler, then let me know in those comments down below. I will also point out that the Ryzen 5 1600 AF variant varies in pricing depending on where you look and when you look. Uh, it is possible to find it for under $100. Uh, but pricing is very fluctuating with this, this CPU, whether it's in stock at different outlets or not. I will leave a link down below in case you want to check out what current pricing looks like on Amazon. All right, let's get rid of this 30. Oh, wow, we have the 3000G actually in there right now. So that's a cheap, cheap processor. I had a video about that recently. Let's go ahead and grab the 1600. Ooh, if I can open it. And delicately, just so delicately, drop it in there for what I hope is a flawless installation. Now, with these stealth coolers and the Wraith Spires as well, I found the easiest way to install them is to just get each sort of side started. So start with one corner, go to the opposite corner. Don't tighten it clear down because that actually makes it harder to get the other side started. And then once you get both sides started, you can kind of go around and retighten everything, alternating corners, of course. And we are ready to pop over to the test bench area and get this thing going. Uh, I am gonna test this a couple of times with stock speeds as well as with overclock speeds, though we are gonna keep all other variables as uh, identical as possible. Now it is worth noting that this is on an X370 motherboard, so that may make a slight difference with the overclock, but overall it shouldn't affect things a whole lot. So as we see here, we do in fact have our new CPU installed. We're gonna go ahead and hit F1, get into the BIOS here, and we're gonna set up some things before we get going. 
Now, even though I do have RAM that can run at 3600 megahertz, at least uh, on the sticker, you know, with the DOCP profile, it should be able to hit 3600 megahertz. We're gonna leave it at 3200 megahertz because these first gen Ryzen parts, and I know that this is probably more like a second gen part, but some of these first gen Ryzen parts do have a little bit of a difficulty hitting uh, some of those higher speeds there. Now, I'm actually gonna load up the uh, defaults here to see what exactly we're defaulting to and then switch it up because it had my old profile loaded. Uh, we're going to leave the core ratio as auto. We're going to leave everything else as auto. And we're going to hope that it boots into Windows and just to test this out using just those stock settings other than loading up the 3200 megahertz profile for the RAM. Now I am fully aware there are better ways to really stress out the CPU than using the IDA benchmark here, or rather it's the stability test, but I'm gonna run this with the CPU, FPU, and cache all being stressed. Again, I know that's also not the uh, best way to generate just a ton of heat, but that is just an overall good way of testing system stability. Uh, if we just run the FPU, we'll end up with lower overall clock speeds being stable, but we will know that it is rock solid and stable. So obviously if you need the utmost of stability, you would wanna run just the FPU test instead of running CPU cache and FPU together. But I'm really mostly interested in day-to-day -day use. Is this gonna be stable? And being that we're on auto settings outside of just the RAM, this should be perfectly stable, but I'm curious here what our temperatures end up looking like as well as what our wattage looks like and really that's why I like this unified chart here we have this yellow line off to the side tells us we are currently running on uh, 3.6 gigahertz or just shy of 3.6 gigahertz running at 53 degrees Celsius with the CPU diode at 66 degrees Celsius 1.221 volts or 1.2 volts somewhere in that range with a package wattage oh we did actually fail here. So I'm actually going to back off on the RAM and see if the RAM there is an issue. Even though it's not being stressed, I wonder if that's part of our issue there. Okay, so we did just cross the five minute mark of this stress test. Now at the top, you'll see we're using roughly 86, 87 watts of power on the CPU right now. The CPU diode is stabilized at 77 degrees Celsius. The CPU temperature itself has been sort of popping up and down between 69 and 70, but it's pretty stable there. It really doesn't take very long for this cooler to reach its equilibrium. There's just not much mass with the Wraith Stealth cooler. And our equilibrium clock speed bounces up and down a little bit, but right at 3.5 gigahertz, and we're right Right at that 1.2 volt. Now the nice thing here is that temperature wise we do actually have just a little bit of headroom left over uh, to, to up the clock speeds a little bit and what we're trying to top here to really get a successful overclock because this is an all core uh, clock speed right now of 3.5 we basically need to hit something like 3.6, 3.7, 3.8 and stick to about this voltage or even maybe drop it down a little bit to see if we can uh, really boost the clock speed, drop the voltage a little bit so we can not uh, overload our temperature as much. But this is, these are kind of the numbers to be as we go in and try to overclock on this stock cooler. And I just started this test. We are running at 1.2 volts from the bio setting, running at 3.7 gigahertz. And uh, since we just started the test, we're gonna see these temperatures rise up though, because I just ran a stress test, it wouldn't surprise me if these temperatures stabilize relatively quickly. But basically we're gonna give this five minutes and see if we can pass this stress test. And then if we do, we're just gonna go ahead and bump that clock speed up even a little bit further. So now this test has been running for just over 12 minutes now, obviously still at 1.2 volts here. We are at 3.7 gigahertz. Not really sure what happened here with the CPU diode temperature. The CPU itself stayed perfectly level right there at that 74, 75 degree mark. So like I said, not really sure what's going on there, but we do seem to be at least reasonably stable at 3.7 gigahertz. So from here, we're just going to basically uh, keep testing things out and... Uh, well, I'll come back with the end results of where we got to and how high we got these clock speeds on the just the stock cooler.
So the camera died while testing, but it was actually during the last test that the camera did die. I found that the Ryzen 5 1600 AF variant is in fact at least stable enough for day-to-day -day use at 1.2 volts and that would be 3.85 gigahertz was the clock speed that I was able to get out of this CPU with that Wraith Stealth cooler. Now there are several things to be balancing with something like this Ryzen 5 1600 with a Wraith Stealth cooler. Not only are you balancing not overloading the CPU and getting it too warm with such a uh, low TDP cooler there, a cooler that just can't really handle a ton of heat being dumped into it, but then also if you're dropping down the voltage too far, you're potentially making it less stable. At the same time, by pumping more voltage into it, you're actually potentially making it unstable that direction as well because the heat is going to be building up so there is a little bit of a sweet spot that you have to find and the good news with this is if you have a well ventilated case you can in fact get a little bit of extra performance out of the Ryzen 5 1600 AF variant by overclocking it across all six cores. Now whether it's actually recommended that you overclock this really comes down to whether or not you want that extra performance or not. If you're just doing kind of day-to-day -day tasks, you're probably not gonna notice any sort of difference whatsoever. But if you are gaming using this CPU, you will probably notice a small difference and uh, a small jump in frame rate if you're able to get that all core overclock a little bit higher than it would be otherwise on just stock settings. And uh, you'll probably notice it in your games, especially the ones that do take advantage of lots of cores and lots of threads. So that's basically all I could get out of the Ryzen 5 1600 at 3.0 9 gigahertz it sort of fell on its face and I do expect if you were really hitting that FPU like if I turned on just the FPU test in Ida 64 3.85 gigahertz probably wouldn't be stable either I'd probably have to knock that down to 3.8 or even 3.75 the FPU is a little bit hard to keep the temperatures down but this is a little bit more representative of like a gaming environment where you're probably not going to be hitting all the cores and all the threads perfectly across the board at 100% usage very often. So this should be plenty stable enough for day-to-day -day gaming. But of course, if you do want to see more testing of the Ryzen 5 1600 AF variant, let me know in those comments down below, especially if you do want to see that test or that video where I uh, put the Liquid Freezer 2 cooler on it and really try to push it with an overkill cooling solution. Let me know if you want to see that down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos for my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.